Good morning to each and every one of you under the sound of my voice that can see my face. This is the show, <clears throat> The Prophet Speaking. I'm Prophet Tom Ingham, live in the studio. Today is Friday, the 30th of July. Live in the studios. Live in the studios. We'll be in the morning in Birmingham at the library, the auditorium in the library, downtown Birmingham, 21st Street. Looking forward to being there, preaching the gospel. Looking forward to each and every one of you out there under the sound of my voice. Come join me. Come hear the word of God preach with the spirit and truth being manifested and the gifts of the spirit being manifested. <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the gifts of the spirit today. We're going we're gonna to attack this one thing. I'm really going to get more or less into the gifts, more or less Monday, but we're going to attack this. It's not just the Pentecostals. It's a lot of so-called holiness denomination. You know, a lot of folks probably felt <clears throat> with the, the, in the Baptist denominations that he needed to spread some of that attacking around because he'd been attacking the Baptist Methods and the Presbyterian, the Catholics a lot. But these so-called Pentecostal holiness, this Pentecostalism, I want to attack this ignorance that they call tarrying. I mean, I got to really attack this because I don't know how loud, and the devil really come at me about this, not just with people. He, he comes at full-fledged attack. He, 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 he want to come at me to stop me from really making this known because of the, the witchcraft that's involved in it, <clears throat> the, uh, the enchantment that the Word of God speaks about. These people don't even have an idea that they're doing enchantment at these so-called tarrying services. Nothing's never seen in the Word of God. They better not compare that to the upper room because what went down in the upper room is nothing like what they got going on. But we're going to talk about that. We're going to, first of all, get our paid advertisers up first and make known unto them that we appreciate them and we hope you all go out. That's Dress Out Boutique in Gaston, Alabama. Minister Wilbur Harrison is the owner. And he has hired another great worker for him that's down there with him, uh, <clears throat> Princess Miller. She's managing the store and she's doing it. He says she's doing a great job and everybody else out here says she's doing a great job. So he also does the fogging business. So. When you come down, you can talk with him about that, or you can call him at 256-441-9095. He's located on East Broad Street in Gaston, Alabama. Give him a call. He'll give you directions to his store, 256-441-9095. Um, <clears throat> you that need this germ-killing business, you know, that wants their stores germ-killed, and just give him a call. You give him a call, and he will definitely assist you into whatever you need done and you can come by and get close. It's a men and women's boutique so men and women can come. All righty, let's go to the next one which should be Blings and Things of Gas in Alabama. Miss Tori Rigby, I've been pronouncing her name wrong and her, her mother has been probably laughing at me. It's not an S in Rigsby but hey, this is what I try to tell y'all people, I'm not the wisest outside the scriptures. But anyway, this is the women boutique store. They have fine women clothing, up to date, the newest fashions. They also sell jewelry. And um, you can order offline, www.blingsandthings.com or just call for information, 256-441-4229. They're located in Gaston, Alabama. And you or anybody else who wants to advertise their business, give me a call after the show, 256, no, 205, that's my number, I'm thinking about 256, what's the name number, 205-568-7038, just give me a call if you want to advertise your business. I want to put myself out for some more labor, and I want to announce that we, <clears throat> we actually have the location on the Bible study in Selma, Alabama which will be on Thursdays in Selma, Alabama at the YMCA. In, excuse me, in Selma, Alabama. Give me a call after the show. Miss Ellis has been a great assistant 
hope she's listening today. Shout out to her. She's been a great sister to help me and assist me into getting this going in Selma. At Selma, Alabama, 6 o'clock, YMCA, Thursdays. That will be their day. Gas in Alabama day for Bible study is 12.30 in the evening time. The surrounding area cities, you need to come. People in Selma, there's a surrounding area, and it's not too far for you to drive. You'll be able to see the prophet and preach and teach and ask questions. We'll have an open Bible study. It's going to be great. <clears throat> um, gas in Alabama is at 12.30. In Birmingham, Alabama, gas is on Monday. Birmingham would be on Friday. It would be on Fridays. And most likely it's going to be at the YMCA. I get, get a chance it's going to be at the YMCA <clears throat> on the parkway. I'll be closing that deal out to make sure. But I got time to let you know when I come back on Lord's Willing Monday. <clears throat> We're going to open up with a word of prayer. Boy, oh, yeah, let me put myself out there. I noticed there's a lot of churches out there where they don't have a pastor. They're bringing in people to preach. And sometimes they do it to interview people to pastor their church. I'm not so much, not, not interested in pastoring your church, but I do know sometimes it's hard for them to actually get a minister to come speak on Sundays. Anywhere in the state of Alabama, I'm putting myself out there for Sundays. Look like I'm gonna be working six days when it's all said and done, and I rest on Saturdays. I'm not gonna book anything for Saturdays. But Sundays, if you need a minister to come and preach where you're vacated of a pastor, and um, just give me a call. You deacons out there, you people who are over the local assembly at the, whatever city or state, in, in whatever city you're in in this state, just give me a call if you need me to come, if you would, like, would desire for me to come, and just preach the word unto you on Sunday mornings. Give me a call, 205-568-7038. Call me after the show. Or you could actually call me on the show. It wouldn't bother me. But... Um, at the same time, let me open up with a word of prayer, and we're going to talk about this, the gifts of the Spirit, but, but a prelude to the gifts of the Spirit. We're going to talk about this false worship called tarrying, which is not seen in the Scriptures as a regular thing. And, and is, let me just make, this, make sure you understand. It's not even seen in the Scriptures. What was, do, what was going on in the upper room on the day of Pentecost? They were praying. And I'm going to show you what they was not saying as you see in these tarian, so-called tarian service, that these so-called Pentecost, Pentecostal and so-called holiness that they do in these services. And if you Pentecostals or so-called holiness want to call in and justify it, after I tell what you are doing, because I've been in there and participated and seen this foolishness, okay, so I already know it. I want to see you line it up with, with the scriptures. You will have opportunity once I open my lines up. Let me open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, my Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us for our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive our trespassers. Lord, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, I give you thanks and I give you glory to the most high God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, we love you. Father God, we thank you for your long suffering toward us. Father, we thank you for your patience. And as you, we thank you for your transformation, transforming us into perfection, that which you desire for us to be. And Father God, I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, just open up the hearts and minds of the listeners, Father. Father God, send a spirit of repentance upon these Pentecostal ministers to at least acknowledge the truth and the error of their way. Let it be so, Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, that's one of the biggest things that you have that is not talked about a lot in the gospel is the pride of life. You know, the lust of the eyes and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life or the three ways that sin and iniquity enters and, and locks itself in an individual. You got too many people <clears throat> that are leading congregations of hell behind pride. Just like today I'm going to show you in the scriptures where this was misunderstood by these people and taking it 
as this is what they're supposed to do. Like I said yesterday, not yesterday, but um, Wednesday, we're not, as believers in Christ, we're not to try to reenact history that has already taken place. We're not to try to reenact it. In other words, we have faith in what happened. And as a way, we take instructions from the, what happened in righteousness, but not to try to reenact it. What happened to the Pentecostals and these so-called holiness, they tries to reenact what happened on the day of Pentecost in the upper room. But I'm going to show you what they do, and I'm going to show you what the scriptures say that went on in the, up in the, in the uh, upper room. In the upper room, they were praying. When you are praying, you know, the scripture talks about praying and making your request known unto the Lord. Everybody that's praying is not saying the same thing. My prayer and your prayer, my, my prayer and request that I'm making known to the Lord is not going to be the same prayer request you're making known because you are you and I am me. We're individuals. In the upper room, the scripture said there was about 120 men and women and the mother of Jesus. So these people were making different prayer requests before the Holy Ghost came in on them. At these tarrying service, these people are sitting there, and this is what the ones I've actually been to, they say, and they teach these people, go down to the, come down to the altar, and they tell them to say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. They tell them to say Jesus. Or I've heard some say, come down to the altar, and plead the blood of Jesus. What do you mean, plead your blood? We plead in the blood, and they'll be just sitting there saying, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. People, this is enchantment. In the book of Matthew, I think it is, in the sixth chapter, and it might be around the seventh verse, and it could, it, 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 I think it's in the book of Matthew, that it's recorded in the gospel that Jesus, when he began to talk to them about praying, he said, use not vain repetitions of prayer. Do you know the word repetition means saying the same thing over and over? See, that has now become, an in, when you do that, you are enchanting Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. When I open up these lines, I want these Pentecostals, whether they be members or these pastors, do you not understand? I want you to call in and tell me, do you think that that is actually what went on in the upper room? They didn't call on Jesus, 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 and he showed up. This is not a scary movie. This is not the movie Candyman where you look in the mirror and say, Candyman, Candyman, Candyman. He at three times, he's supposed to show up. You don't call Jesus' name, Jesus, 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 and then he show up. That ain't how this happened. That ain't how you receive the Holy Ghost. That is not. And that spirit y'all got, I don't know what it is, but it ain't the Holy Ghost. You gonna, you're not going to get something from the Lord your way or some man's way that came up with it and you all fell for it. You all fell for that. Now, what I want to talk to you about is, they use the word, the evidence of speaking in tongues. You and the word of God, they had the word of God, which you go to Corinthians, the first book of Corinthians 12 chapter, and look at verse seven. It says, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit, P-R-O-F-I-T, with all. In other words, the manifestation, the word of God used the word manifestation. It never said evidence. These people got their own words. They got their own way. And like the Lord been told them, my ways are not your ways, are not, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. But if you go in the word of God, you'll find out his ways because in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. They are instructions. The word of God are instructions. When you, when you read the instructions, and this is where these people got this word called tarrying from, Jesus, in, he made sure that he made the apostles, instructed them before he ascended up into heaven right in front of their face. He told them, tarry ye in Jerusalem. That means wait in Jerusalem now. Don't you go out into the world and preach the gospel, as I told you in Matthew 28. Don't do that yet. I need you to be endured with the power from on high. But I need you to, to, to tarry in Jerusalem. It means wait in Jerusalem. And some people be like, well, we're doing what the Bible say do. It told us to tarry. No, they told them to tarry. If you're doing what the Bible said do, and you're going to do everything he tells somebody else to do, why haven't y'all built the ark yet? Why haven't y'all did what he told Noah to do? Go find some gopher wood. Why y'all didn't do all that? See, stop being stupid and stop playing like you didn't, you didn't be, get misled. 
the instructions was to, for the apostles to tarry. There's no such thing as this type of foolishness going on in the book of Rome, the church at Rome, the church at Corinth, the church at Ephesus, the church at Colossus, the church at Thessalonica. This never went on. There was no such thing as tarry. See, people, let me tell you something. Until you get deep and dig into the apostles' doctrine, you're going to get misled. Because until you know what you've been instructed to do and that the actions of the apostles made known unto us what we're supposed to do. I'm talking to the men of God right now. Every man of God has to submit himself to the apostles' doctrine. This is what's not being done. That's how these denominations and these different religions were able to sprout up. Because these men have made you people think that God have led them to do what they're doing. God ain't letting nobody run around calling and saying his name, Jesus, 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 the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. You so stupid. You know, I'm telling you, man, it is, it's time out. God winks at ignorance, but now he's commanding every man to repent. Now I want to open up my lines right now because I want to see if it's uh, any Pentecostal pastor bold enough to come forth and, and justify that foolishness. My lines are open 256-369-1688. This is foolishness. This has been done, and you think, well, God been blessing him. No, he ain't. He been long-suffering. You consider that a blessing. He been merciful and long-suffering and patient. But now, you hear this word here? I should have warned you. You should have turned to TV if you didn't want to hear the truth. Because now you don't heard it. Do it. Keep on doing it now. See where mercy and long-suffering and patience go. Watch what I'm telling you. You're going to see God going to show up on you with this corona pestilence and, get, and, and put, them, put them jumper cables and then choke you out. You people think it's a game with God. We got a call. I hope it's one of them bold enough to talk. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Turn your, yeah, oh, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Hey, hey. TV yet. Stop. Hey, ma'am, turn your television down. Turn your volume down. Hey, will you? Oh, I am? Oh, you're oh. going to hell. Hey, can I get your name? you you going to hell, Brother Rapper. You show sure them. Don't know what you talk. Let me get off the air. Let me, let me, let me, re, let me revisit the rules of engagement when you call in. See, do y'all hear that woman? Let me tell you two things you can hear and make sure you understand. You can hear two things. That's a female and that's a Negro. That's a black female. And what I've seen, and I hate it the most because of my race being black, the devil sits up big in these women that are black. In other words, she didn't come with no scriptures. I'm going to give her opportunity to call back again. But this, let, me, let me revisit the rules of engagement. And she said, I'm going to hell. Boy, when I get in my white suit, my white robe and my crown, it's almost I can see it. I can see her coming before the throne and God, the saints of God, going to judge the world. Just hold on one second. Now, let me make sure we understand the rules of engagement. When you call in, you must talk to me, not at me. You ask questions and comments, I ask questions and comments. It calls me not to be talking to you, and you not to be talking to me. Now, I hope this ain't the same lady just going to start talking. At least listen. Did we miss it? Go ahead, call you on there. Go ahead, call you on there. I think they hung up, Rob. It'll be okay. I think they hung up. I appreciate that how you told me to do that, though, um, to hit two and three. My lines are open, 256-369-1688. Notice she didn't call in with showing any scriptures to come against what I'm saying, because see what I'm saying in the scriptures. So I'm going to hell by preaching the gospel. Hold on. Go ahead, call you on there. Go ahead, caller, you on air. Caller, you on air. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, I can hear you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, who am I speaking with? Michael Byrne, the same, the same dude you talked to the other day. Michael. Okay, out of Birmingham. No, sir, out of Anderson. Sir, I'm, I'm trying to remember you, but go ahead. Well, uh, go ahead. I figured out my memory's not the greatest in the natural. I'm, I'm, I'm I was the one that was talking about my mother. Oh, um, yes. Hi, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah you, you, I prayed for you over the phone about your mother. Okay, I remember yes, now. Sir. How you and doing I today? Thank you. And I, we doing good. 
good. She started back working. Mm. She started back. They, 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 the, the doctors gave her a letter to go back to work. Man, she she got healed of that fast because when you were talking to me, she was real sick. Yes, sir. I know. And like that's what I thought she was going. I thought she going to not be able to go back to work, but the doctors gave her letter saying go back to work, and then she started work like for two or three days ago. Oh, thank God. Thank God. Thank God, brother. Thank God. God, God to God be the glory. I, listen, I'm I'm glad you called to get prayer for. Yes, sir. And I'm just praying now on that. I got to keep praying for it. Just keep her motivated and keep her health as it needs to be. Like, the other day, somebody helped to pay her. Like, I know what somebody helped pay her medicine and everything. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for all her medicine. Then... One of her co-workers had on, gave her some money two years today while she was at work. Okay, uh, well, let me ask you a question, brother. Uh, uh, is is she out work Saturday, tomorrow? Uh, yes, yeah, so she out Saturday and Sunday, but sometimes it all depends on what they got the people doing. Because she work at the chick plant in Anderson down okay. here in Gaston. Well, not down here in Anderson, in Gaston. Okay. Well, let me ask you a question. This is why I asked that question. I'm going to be in Birmingham preaching. I wish it was a possible way y'all could make it to Birmingham. Tomorrow at twelve o'clock at the Birmingham okay. Library. I should, let me see what I can do. I get my. Dinner. Well, yeah, my, yeah, my, do that, do that. Give me a call. Dinner, yeah, give me a call after the show and we'll talk about it. Do that, Mike. The after the show number. Yeah, two zero five five six eight seven zero three eight, and we see can we. Yes, sir, I got, yes, sir. I have both of the numbers saved in my phone. I'm the same country. Okay, so well, I, I, yeah. call me out the show, and we see if we make arrangements to get get they try to get you all down there. I definitely would love her to come in, in, in person and it be, hear me preaching, and you know, I'll be able to lay hands upon her and just you know yes, pray sir. to God, make her whole. I appreciate it. Call me out the show. Yes, sir. Thank all right, sir. all right, bye bye. My line's open two five six three six nine one six eight eight. Getting back to that black Negro female who called in. Let me make sure. Some of you say, man, you, can, you don't need to be saying it. I'm black, I can say what I want to say. See, because it's not prejudice. If I was white saying it, it might sound a different way. But this, I'm black, I know black people. One thing I found out about black women, they've allowed the devil to come inside them. Now, I'm going to tell you something. If I was a Caucasian preacher, you couldn't have paid her to call in here and say anything about that. I guarantee you. Remember I told you how black folks are scared of white folks? Remember I talked about it a couple of weeks back? when I was talking about the difference. Not in Christ. See, she ain't in Christ. See, she ain't scared of me, but if I'd been a white man, see, she would never call and did that. But the thing, let's look at what she reviewed. Let's be revisit what she said. You going to hell. Well, what scripture did you have that showed that I'm preaching something contrary to that's what's written in the book that you carrying? If you carry a King James Version, I'm quoting the scriptures right out of there. See, what it is, she one of them black women. I guarantee you, that's been down there just like, just ignorant, foaming at the mouth, hollering, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then all of a sudden, they call themselves jumping up, doing all this jackaling, jaw jackaling. That is, that is not how the Lord at ever, at any point, wanted the house of prayer, his house, the church, being ran with a bunch of confusion and a bunch of women running around like a bunch of, bunch of chickling, clackling ducks making sounds that makes no sense and ain't nobody interpreting. You know, I talked about that Wednesday, how the scripture said, he that, pre that speak in an unknown tongue, let him pray that he may interpret. God don't want people in coming in there and see this going on and then there's no understanding. You know, that's the problem with people. They want, even the Apostle Paul talked about it in, I think, 1 Corinthians 13, he said, though I speak with the tongue of men and angels, he said, if I don't interpret this, if I speak 10,000 words unto you and you don't even understand none of them, it does no good. It's no edifying. I guarantee you. See, black people are the one who really have taken this so-called holiness, this so-called Pentecost. That's when you, you know some black men, they just chicken. They more chicken. The women more, skip, more brave. Listen, I do give the devil, the, the devil credit. He real bold in them women to call. Them black men, they chicken. They not going to call. But you know why they not going to call? Because they know I'm telling the truth. See, but they don't never, the pride don't set up. So they don't want to go back and say, you know what? We've been wrong. We, we, we missed this. Because the tarrying 
in Jerusalem that was appointed to the apostles, it was not for us. No one has to go way to Jerusalem to get the Holy Ghost. No one has to do that. Okay, so therefore you see a situation of they missed it right then. But someone came up with this so-called mindset that this is how you receive the Holy Ghost by going to the altar and saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I, they tried to get me to do that. They actually had me doing that until the Lord told me, said, get up, get up from there. I've been to you, my spirit. Get up from there. I'm going to tell you about this matter when you leave here. These people are so blown away. I'm talking about the pride of these people. There's nothing that says you need to speak in tongues to have evidence. But I, as I told you in 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, the Apostle Paul said that, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man in the body of Christ to profit with all. He gave, and in the next verse he lets you know, by one is given the word of wisdom by the Spirit, and another the word of knowledge, same Spirit. He began to go on and name different gifts, gifts of faith, gifts of tongues, gifts of working miracles. He goes on to name all of those gifts. And the thing that bothers me more than anything is when you see these people, when you see these people saying that it takes this gift and begin to force many people to do this idle chatter that they do. Oh, I just got a text saying that in Gaston, Alabama, someone was letting me know that they cable is messed up on WOTM, but they can see ABC and NBC. It'll be okay. We'll just keep trying to get it, but that's okay. But listen, I want you people to understand something, that we have the Word of God to prove what's the instructions of God in righteousness. Anything that's not in the Word is not from God. And this is what these people think that, just like that woman called in here, not one scripture. Black people are the most ignorant people when it comes to knowing the Word of God. I promise you, you can get mad all you want to. I know you dumb Negroes. I know you. You can't fool me. It's like they got this mentality and it fits what the people say. If you ever want to hide something from a black person, a Negro, just put it in a book. They got a problem reading. You're not going to be able to be blessed if you're not going to read the Word of God. You're not going to be blessed. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You thinking you can be blessed without reading the Word of God? You can't even know God without knowing His Word. And this is the problem. But when someone like me come in their same color that rebukes and openly rebukes them and, and tell them to start doing what it takes for salvation, you got to study to show yourself approved unto God. You'll never know God if you don't study. Jesus, when Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, how are you going to learn him if you don't know his word? These folks want you to believe that they put that like, I guarantee that black woman that called in wear a long dress to go along with her loud mouth. And she can call back in and talk with me. Show me scriptures where I'm going to hell for preaching the gospel. You think you're going to go and you don't know the word? And somebody don't bamboozle you and hoodwink you to get down at the altar and say, Jesus, 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 that enchantment, that witchcraft, the spirit that entered into you was not the Lord. That is not how you get the Holy Ghost, enchanting. We don't enchant our Lord. You say, Jesus, what time he can hear you? The Lord told us how to pray. Coming to an altar saying, Jesus, 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 I, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. That's of the devil. It's called enchantment. But most black people wouldn't know that because they don't read. They don't study. They won't. They won't pray to God to show them. They don't have faith that God can show them. But what they do, they grab a coattail and run behind it. But what them black pastors that who had you down at that altar? You know say nobody called and said, we don't do that. We don't be down there saying, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, you do. That's when you ain't calling and saying you don't. We don't be down there saying the blood of Jesus. We don't have no tarrying services. Yes, you Pentecostals and so-called holiness. Yes, you do. 
and God sent me to expose you. And you can get mad all you want to, but the truth is the light, and the light is the truth. My lines are open, 256-369-1688. I'm sorry for you people who are having trouble in gas, and they're saying that they're being cut off. The cable company, some kind of way, having trouble getting them on WOTM, but they got ABC and NBC. I'm going to have to get on ABC and NBC, too. You that can hear me and like what you're hearing, you like that someone is bringing the truth to the light. How many of you out there have, and I know a lot of people don't told me this before, that they're, they're, they're not even churchgoers, said they went to a church, and when they saw that madness, they got scared and left. My line's over, 256-369-1688. Maybe we'll have someone call and testify, say they ran me out there. Them so-called folk, holy folk, they was uttering and stutter uh, words that I've never heard before. Nobody was giving me an understanding, and they were saying that the Holy Ghost was doing that. Well, the Holy Ghost is all about you understanding who he is. Jesus wants you to know who he is. He wants you to know his ways. If you speak by an unknown tongue, there must be an interpreter. The scripture, Paul said, if not so, and we're going to get off into it Monday. See, I'm just going over it now. Monday, I'm going to be deep into it. But what I'm tearing down right now is a prelude to the teachings of the gifts that tarry in foolishness. Foolishness. You've never seen the apostles do that. They was in the upper room praying. And like I just told you a few minutes ago, everybody, when we praying, don't pray the same thing. And what I liked about that was the Jews on the outside of the upper room spoke different languages. Let me explain to you what that gift of tongues was for, used for that day, and it's, it's, it, it, you need to understand what it was used for. There was different Jews outside, in other words, Jews that spoke different language outside the upper room. All of the Jews in the upper room spoke the same language. But when the Spirit of God came in like a, a, a mighty rushing wind, and they began to speak in different tongues, those in the upper room, the different Jews outside the upper room heard them speaking in their, their different languages. And that question they asked, are not all these Galatians? We hear them speaking in our language. The mighty works of God. That was the purpose. But they went up in that upper room, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That reminds me of, of Goma, uh, uh, Andy Griffith when Judy, when uh, Goober was on that hiding, Judy, 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 this little girl that he was enthused with, or somebody liked it, he was picking at him saying, Judy, Judy, Judy. They was, they, they, listen. Our God is not a God of co confusion. He's not the author of confusion. When the Lord taught us how to pray, as you saw me pray as I got on the air, you saw me pray. That prayer is the prayer that the disciples, when they asked the Lord, Lord, teach us to pray, this is what he told them how to pray. Okay, when they get to the upper room, they open up with that, and then they begin to go into making their prayer request known unto the Lord. None of them was in there in an enchantment saying, Jesus, Jesus. That, that, that's against what the Lord said. Use not vain repetitions of prayer. Jesus heard you the first time you called his name. He don't need to be enchanted down. He's, this is not witchcraft. You know the word of God speaks against enchantment. Some of you don't know what it is because you're ignorant, because you don't read the word. My line's open, 256-369-1688. It's too quiet. The lady that called in, you want to call in and prove to people I'm uh, uh, going to hell? You're going to show them in the scriptures where what I'm saying is not in the scriptures or it's wrong? But you don't have no scriptures, do you? Just like most of the so-called holders in Pentecost, you don't know the word, do you? Y'all come to church and y'all get that tambourine and that drum and that, and, 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 and that organ dun, 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 and the drum do 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 and the tambourine ting, 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 and all y'all do is jump around there like a bunch of clowns. Mop the flow, all on the flow. People, I know some of you out there don't bend and got ran out of there through fear. My line's open 256-369-1688. It might be a, one of those days where the cable company having a problem with a lot of people. It wasn't, that, it wasn't having them with that false woman. The devil had hers up and she called in. Talking about, I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell because I'm preaching the word. The devil is a lie. Heaven is my place. If you don't turn from that foolishness, you're going to hell. 
If you don't let that devil get that spirit out of you, that with a, you know, the word of God, I'm going to tell you why I know you don't have the Holy Ghost. Because the word of God talks about a woman of God has a quiet and meek spirit. What we heard from you a while ago, one quiet and meek. That's that Negro woman. I told you, Jake and her neck and all that. That's the devil's, that's the devil's Christian right there. He got her right where he want her. But like I told you, if I was a white man, if I was, a, if I was Caucasian persuasion, she'd have never, she'd have never called in here and said that. Too scared. Oh, I ain't going to do that. Scatter the white man. I know you. Yeah. Like the rest of most Negro, they scare the white people. If you ain't Christ, you ain't scared of nobody. And most I always say this. When I'm talking about black, white, Caucasians, or Negro, I ain't talking about the saints. I'm talking about the ain'ts. I, mean, I ain't talking about the children of God. The, the, the members of the body of Jesus Christ. I ain't talking about y'all. Don't get, don't get it twisted. You know that ain't you. So you know I ain't talking about you. But that clown just called in early. I'm talking about her. She proved all she do. Open my mouth. She showed you what was in her. No scriptures. You going to hell. You going this. You doing this. You need to get off there. You working good for Satan. Because, see, Satan don't teach the gospel. You ministers, the ministers that got you, your pastor is definitely the devil. See, I know you was offended by what I was saying, but you never tried to justify it and say, well, you know, in, in the scriptures right here, it's written that they did this right here and did that right there. You ain't got no scriptures. See, you thinking that guy, you thinking you got the Holy Ghost because you was in there faking, speaking in tongues like the rest of them. Got a long dress on, we holding it. We don't wear makeup. Us women don't wear makeup. We don't wear dresses. I ain't telling you not wearing makeup and not wearing dress is wrong, but it don't make you right neither because God is a God who searches the heart. What's in your heart? Nothing. You ain't got no word. What was your scriptures when you called in? My line's open, 256-369-1688. I'm wondering where them little sissy pastors at. Where they at? Them little sissy pastors who ain't scared, who scared, who ain't bold enough to call in and show the scriptures. They don't have none. They just hoping I go away where they can continue to do what they've been doing to you people, bamboozing you, bewitching you. They definitely bewitching you. Just like Paul asked them Galatians, who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? When the Lord said, don't use vain repetition of prayer, why is you down there hollering Jesus, 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 Jesus? Or the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. But I forgot to mention this the other day when a preacher friend of mine, Pastor Washington, told me about the young man that said that he believed God has called him to preach. He said, but he can't preach till he speak in tongues. That's what he'd been told by them so-called Pentecostal, so-called holiness, whatever that foolishness he in. And Pastor Washington said, what do you mean? He said, well, I, I've been tearing for the Holy Ghost. This was his comment. He said, I've been tearing for the Holy Ghost, but every time I tear for the Holy Ghost, I just fall asleep. <laughs> Pastor White said, that I'll tell you something right there. <laughs> Listen, people, it's funny, but it shouldn't be. But this is what happened. This is what happened when you don't get in the scriptures. Look for the instructions. Go to your God. He is his word. Go to him, and he'll tell you how to receive him. And that is not based on no gift of no tongue. It's definitely not no evidence. The scriptures say the manifestation. And that's what I want you people to look at, Corinthians 12 and 7. The manifestation of the Spirit. It's not an evidence. It's a manifestation of the Spirit that's given to every member of the body of Christ who receives Christ in them. The different gifts, Paul, begin to name out there. But the word of the day is the manifestation, not the evidence. There's no crime being committed. It's not a crime. It might be a crime to the devil if God give you his spirit and to his church. But it's not a crime. That's when the Lord used the word, the manifestation. That's when he said in Mark 16, these signs with an S on it shall follow them that believe. Not no evidence. They don't, they don't, they don't, we don't know. We didn't get caught. The saints of God never got caught up in the tongue. We understood the tongue. When properly taught, you understand that the tongue is a gift that comes from God that has a purpose. It's a sign for an unbeliever. Now, remember I told you about those other uh, Jews that were outside the upper room. The tongue was used for a sign 
by those 120 that spoke, that God gave the gift of tongues, it was used for a sign for them because they were unbelievers. Why were they unbelievers? Because the law is what they wanted to continue to hold on. But the gospel had to start with the apostles and the other 120 of brethren, the mothers and, and children of God that was in the upper room, the leaders of the gospel, the apostles. That's why he told them, you tarry in Jerusalem. In other words, you wait. The word tarry means wait. But getting back to black folk, they'll, they'll quote a word, don't even know what it means. They think tarry means go to an altar and, and pray. The word tarry does not mean, it means wait. Delay yourself, wait in Jerusalem. Tarry don't mean go down to the altar and pray. That's when he told them to tarry ye in Jerusalem. That didn't mean go in the upper room and pray. They just happen to be doing what they do anyway. Go to the upper room to pray at a certain time or hour of the day. That's what happened. So let's make sure we understand. My line's open, 256-369-1688. Let's make sure we understand that tarry don't mean what black people have tried to make it mean. And the reason I say black people, because I don't know no white people that do it. And I'm sure it's some, though. I'm sure it's some. But I don't know many blacks, no whites personally. I know blacks personally. This is the explanation that they gave of what this service is consistent of. They call it tarrying service. We're going to tarry on Thursday for the Holy Ghost. You mean the Holy Ghost has been over 2,000 years released on the earth for whomsoever will that comes to Christ? And if you think about it, even with Peter, when he went to Cornelius, he didn't baptize them in Jesus' name. Then they spoke in tongues. As he preached the gospel to them, they believed. Let's make sure I understand this, him. Make sure I make, sure I make, make, sure I make this understanding to you all. Listen to this understanding. Repenting and being baptized does not come before believing. Hearing the gospel is where you believe the gospel. In other words, the gospel can profit you none except you have faith mixed into what you are hearing. That's what Hebrews 4 and 2 said, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached unto them did, did not profit them, P-R-O-F-I-T. The same word Paul uses in, in um, uh, Corinthians 12 and 7. The manifestation of spirit is given to every man to profit. See, in other words, God can do you no good, and you cannot labor for God except you first believe before you repent and be baptized in Jesus Christ. Now, you still got to believe the gospel first. You got to believe. You got to believe what Romans 10 and 9 tell you also, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be say shout be is a process it puts you in the right position in the right direction you're on the right road but you haven't made it yet Jesus said he didn't do it to the end the same shall be saved if you think about this and most people don't because they're not taught this what you have to be taught is I must first have faith in the Lord before I can receive any of his benefits you can't receive the Holy Ghost till you got faith in God you got to believe that he is God the scripture makes it plain. In the book of Hebrews, he talks about if any man come unto him, he must first believe that he is God. Faith is the sub of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You got to believe that Jesus Christ died, rose again, and you ain't never seen him, let alone seen him rise from the grave. You never seen him before he was crucified. But you must believe the gospel before you can receive any thing from God. His spirit ain't coming into a, nun, a person who would reject him and don't believe him. That's why Peter had to go to Cornelius' house and preach the gospel unto them. Let's take example of the eunuch in the book of Acts, the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian and Philip. Philip joined himself to the chariot, the chariot of the eunuch, I mean the, the Ethiopian. And the Ethiopian had the word of God and turned to the book of Isaiah from the prophets. Now, he don't even know anything about the Holy Ghost. He don't know anything about the baptism. He don't, even think, he don't know anything about Jesus. All he know is he's reading something that the prophet is speaking. We got a caller? Go ahead, caller, you're on there. 
Turn your radio down. Turn your radio down. I mean, your volume down. Hey. Oh, you see, now you see her. I told you the devil was in her. Y'all heard that profanity. Let me make sure we go over the rules of engagement. Do I shut the? T if if y'all listen, if you going to call in and use profane language, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna shut the whole show down. See, cause I'm, or, 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 I'm gonna tell you what you can get in trouble with. Now you can get in trouble with the FCC yourself. So you better be careful that you are on a federal communication line, and we can find you. It ain't hard to find you where you at. And they will prosecute you. You know, you can't be calling here. You profane. But I told y'all the devil was in her. This has been a good teaching. I told y'all the devil was in her. She got a problem with the truth. Unruly, full of Satan. And you can see it. It's right there in her. Now, ma'am, you are not, you, I told you you could call in earlier. You banned now. Don't even call back in. Now, if you call back in, I'm going to get you for harassment. I'm going to go tell you yourself. Like, you will know. Because if you don't agree with what I'm saying, turn your TV off. I'll be out in about 14 minutes. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, turn it off. I'm going to start making, and I usually do that on the radio. When I'm on the radio, I usually tell people when I'm here to get ready to come on. I'm coming on. If you've been listening to me and you disagree, I'm not going to go back on it. I'm like my like brother Will say, I, I ain't going to say it no different now. I ain't going to say it no different. We ain't going to keep going back and forth because I ain't going to say it no different. So if, now that you know I ain't going to say it no different, you, you leave your TV off WOTM from 10 to 11 when the prophet speech comes on. Because I ain't going to say it no different. I'm going to keep it just like it is. I'm going to say what the scriptures say. I'm gonna, and I'm going to point to you what the scriptures don't say. And if you're doing what the scripture don't say, and it's going to offend you, just turn your television. I'm on from 10 to 11. I'll be back on Lord's Willing Monday. You didn't like it, that's enjoying this program. You see my cash app and you want to give. You didn't, in Birmingham, the prophet, live and in flesh, Lord's Willing. Now, let me make sure this ain't this woman. Go ahead, call you on now. Go ahead, call you on now. Can you hear? Doc, Go ahead. Hear. Go ahead. Doc, that Romans 10 and 9, explain the end of that verse where it says, shall be saved. Sh it says shout. It don't say shall. It says shout. S-H-A-L-T. A-L-T. That's right. right. It doesn't say shall. Watch this closely. It, it said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. Let me explain the top where the bottom will make sense, okay? If you confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus. You know what you're saying in that confession? You're saying that the Lord is God. Do, do, do you understand that? Yes. Okay. You're saying that the Lord is God. That thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and that thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. That means it's a process that has to take place. But if you continue to confess that the mouth, that, 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 that Jesus Christ is, is Lord, you're going to always agree with the word of God. You're not going to never disagree with the word of God. See, that's what people don't mind. If I confess it with my mouth, if I believe it in my heart, that means that none of the other scriptures will actually offend me. They will not be nothing but, because it's him. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So if I'm confessing with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believing in my heart that God had raised him from the dead, I'm going to even believe that when Jesus said, he raised himself from the dead because he said, no man taking my life in John 10. I lay it down. He said, I got power to lay it down, and I got power to raise it back up again. I'm getting a call over here from call the 256-369-1688 number. This caller right here who's calling on my cell phone. Now, now, Doc, let me ask you a question. Who am I speaking with? Hello? I guess they didn't want me to know who I was speaking with. I wanted to know who I was speaking with. Are you still on there? 256-369-1688. I wanted to, I just be asking for names and locations. I just be wanting to know where I'm getting my calls from. He wanted me to explain that last part where it say thou shalt be. Shalt be is a process. A lot of people think when they confess that, that they say right then. That's what, because they've been taught that by many, many ignorant false prophets, many ministers. And a lot of you might say, well, the pastor teaches it. He ain't no false prophet, he a pastor. That's him too. The, false, the pastor is a false prophet. When he tell you that if you confess that scripture right there, you say, that's a lie. And that scripture was never been, meant to be taken. 
Whoever this caller is, please call 256-369-1688. That's the, the, the number you're calling is the number I answer when I'm off the air. 256-369-1688. And a, t and a lot of times, I'm going to tell you something, people didn't like, I like what he said, he wanted me to explain the bottom part. Well, let me explain the top too. See, the top need to be explained. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you are confessing that Jesus is God. The hundred number of Psalms in verse 3 said, Know ye not that the Lord, he is God. That's when I said that. That's in the book of Psalms. That's before he ever showed up. Know ye not that the Lord, he is God. Got a caller. Go ahead, caller. You're on there. Turn your television yeah. volume down. Please do that. Please. Let me make sure I yeah, announce that to everybody. Turn the volume down. Okay, go ahead. No, I know. I hear you. I hear, I mean, I hear myself. Turn it down. I can hear myself. But I'm looking at you, and you're turn, talking ma'am. Turn. turn are you talking to me, too? Ma'am, turn your volume down. Because I'm live in the studio. Turn the volume down, I'm live, I'm live on the studio. That's how I'm talking to you, ma'am. Go ahead. Yes, first I, I would like to say, I'm calling for Rainbow City. Okay, how you doing? Rainbow City, I raised up right there in gas. And go ahead. Okay. Uh, number one, you cannot be saved without obeying the apostle doctrine. Thank you. Thank you. And that's based on Acts 2 and 38. Mm -hmm. and, and the Bible tells us we must be born again of the water and of the spirit, and that's St. John 3. Mm -hmm. And also, we are uh, the, not the, uh, not, we are partakers of the body of Christ with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Stop right there. Stop right there. The Stop right there, sister. Stop right there. Now, you did good when you said the apostles' doctrine, but the apostles never used the word evidence. So why are you using it? I know why you use evidence, because you heard them say well, evidence. Well, it's not in the Bible. You, you're right about that. It's not in the Bible. Well, but it, that but, is the evidence of the Holy Ghost no, it's that not. dwells can, can, in us. Can I ask you a question, when we sister? become born again. Can I ask you a question, sister? Listen to me. Did you know in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, in verse 18, the Lord said, plain and simple, if any man add unto my word, I will add unto him the pleasure That's not adding to the word. Yeah, yeah, stop just, right there, sister. It's just meaning what it says. Well, it, well listen, that sister. It listen, is listen the to evidence. Me. No, 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 sister. Speaking in tongues is the evidence. Please, please don't over talk. So please don't, don't over talk me. Word. We don't add to the word. I know what the scriptures say. Please don't over talk so me. Do I hang up on you? Please, well, listen, sister. Me. Don't over talk me. I don't like when people over talk me. We can talk to each other. I had to hang up on. We can talk to each other. But to sit here and tell me that's not adding, but it came out of your mouth, but it didn't come out of God's mouth. I want everybody to write down Proverbs, the 30th chapter, and beginning with verse 5. It says that every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. He's a shield to those that put their trust in him. It says, add thou not unto his words, lest thee be found a liar. Lest he rebuke thee and thou be found a liar. People, that is adding to his word. Because if you saying that's the evidence, and the Lord never said the evidence, I just quoted in 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. The Apostle Paul said, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And the tongues is not the only manifestation because the next verse, he began to name the gifts that manifest the Spirit. The gift of the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, which you see me doing on here because I'm not coming out of a Bible. This is not a staged show. How would I know what I need to know when she say evidence? And I take her to Revelation 22. She said, that's not it. And I take her to Proverbs, the 30th chapter. And it's telling you in the word of God. Every word of God is pure. Well, what, guess, what, what, what word is that? The one that come out of his mouth. The one that you clutch in your arm, the one that is called the Bible, the apostles' doctrine. She was right on course, but then she don't allow man to add that evidence. So I said, where did you get that from? That didn't come out of the apostles. Now you said we must continue in the apostles' doctrine. So how are you quoting something that didn't come out of the apostles' mouth, but you saying it's the same thing? The devil loves you. You know why he loves you? Because you'll say the same thing 
is the same thing when it's not the same thing. And then you'll say, well, we didn't add nothing, but well, can you show me the word evidence in the scriptures when it's talking about tongues? It didn't use the word evidence. He used signs and manifestation. Evidence is for crime scenes. When you need evidence of crime being committed, you're looking for evidence for, the, for a crime scene. Someone received the Holy Ghost ain't a crime scene, and except you're a devil. But why is you not studying the gifts to know that that's not the only gift that can be received when you receive the Spirit of God, the manifestation of more than one gift? I, I, I just really hate I had to hang up on her, but she just wouldn't listen. Don't over talk me, let's talk to each other. But you telling me, and you lied right here on national TV. You said that's not adding. When I thought I will wait and you'll get a chance to call in and show me where it say that speaking in tongues is the evidence. Show me that. Show the world that. Show the rest of the, the listening audience that. You won't be able to, as we can see, by the evidence of one thing. You've been listening to them. Now, by the manifestation of the Spirit of God in me, we can see that I've been studied to show myself approved unto God. And he got me sharp as, a, sharp as they come. And I'm not boasting in me. I'm boasting in him. See, I ain't got nothing to read from. Appreciate it, Rob. I ain't got nothing to read from. Listen, it's coming out of my heart because he's in there. Listen to me, people. You that's been listening, looking, come to Birmingham tomorrow. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, I will be in Birmingham at the downtown library in Birmingham on 21st Street. In the auditorium of the library, preaching the word. We got a call today and we ain't got but a, but a minute. Call up, I got about 30 seconds I can let you have. Talk to me. Okay, Hebrews 11 and 1, he was talking about the word evidence. Uh, it was crime scene, now I got to explain that. Stop right now there, faith, stop, stop. Let's talk, to, let's talk to each other. Now, I'm gonna quote it. Now, faith is the stuff of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. But faith provides what you what people want to call, in other words, our faith in Christ provides the, p Christ's power. It, the evidence is not with tongues. The tongues is not no evidence. I got one minute. I wish you would have called in earlier. Call back in Monday. We will be on the gifts. That's the evidence of faith, not the evidence of tongues as being the only thing that can prove you got the Holy Ghost. See y'all, Lord's willing, in Birmingham. Give me a call. I got 40. I can't. What time, what time you come on Monday? I'm, I'm 10 o'clock. Call, call me at 10 o'clock. You got the word evidence about faith, but not about tongues. Call me back. Okay. Monday at 10. All right. I'm glad he called in, but I hate he called in at the, the time. I got 30 seconds. So I, when I say show me the, where it say evidence of speaking in tongues, that's where they're using evidence at. Well, we know faith is a substance thing, hope for evidence of things not seen. In other words, I see you all, Lord's willing. I got 15 seconds. See me, see you in the morning. Birmingham, 12 o'clock. The, the private speaker.